Now notice that we're sticking with the same triangle as before. I've got the same exact triangle as before, but now instead of asking you for the sine, cosine, and, and tangent of theta, I'm asking you for the sine of alpha, the cosine of alpha, and the tangent of alpha. You can see that I've labeled it alpha as this angle down here. So please try to find the sine of alpha, the cosine of alpha, and the tangent of alpha for the same triangle that we were just working on a second ago. If these problems give you any difficulty, I hope that you used the same notation that I've been demonstrating on the board. If you were going to try to do that, the very first thing you would do is erase this asterisk on the theta and put it on the alpha, because now we're shifting our attention. Before, we were focusing on the angle theta, but now we're focusing on the angle alpha. Well, it would be easy to forget that if we don't put the asterisk down here. So I'm going to put the asterisk down here to remind myself that now I'm focusing on alpha. Also, I better erase the sides that I've labeled as the opposite and the adjacent. Because when you change angles, you also change who's opposite and who's adjacent. Now this 12 is adjacent to alpha, and the 5 is opposite to alpha. Again, this is an ADJ for adjacent. This side up here was adjacent to theta, but it's opposite to alpha. And the 12 side was opposite to theta, but it's adjacent to alpha. So when we move the asterisk, we also have to relabel which side is opposite and which side is adjacent. We don't have to relabel which side is the hypotenuse, because this side is still opposite the 90 degree angle. Now we can write our general formulas. So katoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Ka, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Write the general formulas before you plug in. Now, the side that's the opposite is the 5, and the hypotenuse is still 13. Adjacent is the 12, and the hypotenuse is 13. And the opposite side is the 5, and the adjacent side is the 12. So we could say now that these are the sine, cosine, and tangent. 5 thirteenths, 12 thirteenths, and 5 twelfths. Or we can use our calculator to do the divisions. 5 divided by 13 is approximately 0.38. 12 divided by 13 is approximately 0.92. And 5 divided by 12 is uh, 0.42, so thereabouts. So the sine of alpha is 0.38. The cosine of alpha is 0.92 and the tangent of alpha is 0.42. This problem was designed to show you that it's crucial to know which angle you're focusing on. You can see there's a big difference between the sine of theta and the sine of alpha. The sine of theta was 0.92, but the sine of alpha was 0.38. So you can see, anytime you're focusing on a right triangle, there's two different angles you could be focusing on, and therefore there's two different signs you could get. So it's very important to be very clear in your mind about which angle you're focusing on, which angle you're taking the sine, cosine, or tangent of. Here the sine of theta was 0.92, uh, but here the sine of alpha was 0.38. Um, and similarly, the cosine of alpha down here was 0.92, but the cosine of theta was 0.38. So when you shift to a different angle, you're going to change the sine and the cosine. Uh, there is a relationship between the sine of theta and the sine of alpha, and the cosine of theta and the cosine of alpha, and the tangent of theta and the tangent of alpha. Um, it shouldn't be too hard for you to figure out what the relationships are. I'm actually not going to cover that explicitly, though, at this point in the videos. But if you like, you might stop the video right now and see if you can figure out on your own what's going to be the relationship between the sines of theta and the sines of alpha, or the cosines of theta and the cosine of alpha, or the tangent of theta and the tangent of alpha. That's actually um, not going to be too crucial for our purposes right now. So that's a puzzle you can work on if you feel like it, but we won't talk about that right now. The only point I want to emphasize right now is that it's crucial to know what angle you're taking the sine, cosine, or tangent of. Uh, that's, why, um, when you, uh, that's why I recommend that you use an asterisk to indicate the angle that you're focusing on. Uh, because very often, both angles are going to have names. Both angles might have names, and it might be that at another point you are focusing on it on the other angle. Uh, but now that we're focusing on this angle, it's good to put this asterisk here so we don't forget that this is the angle we're focusing on. 
Uh, and when we shift our focus, we have to relabel which side is opposite, which side is adjacent, and which side is the hypotenuse. Now, eventually you'll get to the point where you're so comfortable with this that you don't actually have to physically label the adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse sides. Um, but even if you're not labeling them, you still have to see in your head um, that when you f shift your focus from one angle to another, the sides which are opposite and adjacent are also going to flip. Now, something that I oftentimes see students see, something that I oftentimes see students do, is they'll write something like this. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse equals 0.38. It's very common for a student to write something like this. Can you see why this doesn't make any sense at all? What's the big thing that I left out here? Well, notice that this student forgot to put in the angle. Sine is meaningless if you don't say what you're taking the sine of. You have to say the sine of theta or the sine of alpha. It's meaningless to just say sine. Uh, this sometimes happens if students are kind of getting a little lazy and they don't feel like writing every single thing down. Uh, well, you've got to write down the angle, and we can see why now. Um, because if you um, shift to a different angle, you're going to change all the values of your sines, cosines, and tangents. So anytime you're writing down a sine, you have to indicate what is the angle that you're taking the sine of. Are you taking the sine of theta? Are you taking the sine of alpha? What are you taking the sine of? You can never just write down the word sine by itself with no angle just like you could never just write down cosine or tangent by themselves. You have to indicate the angle that you're taking the sine, cosine, or tangent of. Here's another problem. Here's a new triangle. Here's our new triangle with uh, legs of length 2 and 3 and a hypotenuse which is the square root of 13. This hypotenuse is the square root of 13. Here's our right angle. This angle is alpha, and this angle is theta. Let's find the sine of alpha, the cosine of alpha, the tangent of alpha, the sine of theta, the cosine of theta, and the tangent of theta. So there's six different questions that we're posing. Try to answer all six of these questions. So please pause the video and try to answer all six of these. And if this material is giving you any difficulty, try to use the same notation we've been using on the previous problems. Well, we'll start with alpha. Since I'm focusing on alpha to begin with, I'm going to put this asterisk in to remind myself that right now I'm focusing on alpha. Uh, now, the square root of 13 is the hypotenuse because it's opposite to the 90 degree angle. I tried to draw this right triangle as looking a little weirder or a little less usual than the previous right triangles, but hopefully you were able to adapt and see that this side is the hypotenuse, opposite to the 90 degree angle. Uh, now, this side of length 3 is adjacent to the asterisk. The asterisk is adjacent to the side of length 3 and opposite to the side of length 2. I've suggested that before you plug in, you should write the general formulas. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. As long as we're at it, we might as well do that for theta as well. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Of course, who's opposite and who's adjacent is going to be different when we move from alpha to theta. But the general formulas are the same. Uh, remember that every time you write down one of these general formulas, you should be muttering the Sokotoa under your breath to make sure you're not making a careless mistake. Uh, that's what I do, and I encourage you to do that as well. So, so, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Ka, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Uh, let's see, the opposite side here was the 2, and the hypotenuse was the root 13. The adjacent side was the 3, and the hypotenuse was the root 13. Uh, the opposite side was the 2, and the adjacent side was the 3. So we could leave the answers like this. We could say the sine of alpha is 2 divided by root 13, or the tangent of alpha is 2 thirds. But maybe it's better to take our calculator and do the divisions. 2 divided by root 13 is 0.55. I'm just rounding off to what feels good. I'm not worrying about significant figures. Uh, 3 divided by root 13 is approximately 0.83. And 2 thirds is approximately 0.67.
So the sine of alpha is 0.55, the cosine of alpha is 0.83, and the tangent of alpha is 0.67. All of those are, are rounded off. 